Okay, so before we actually do the Gaussian integral, let's look at this related integral, where we do a double integral of e to the minus x squared plus y squared. We want to use polar coordinates to attack this integral. If we switch to polar coordinates, let's walk through it, the domain x and y being real turns into r being anything, any radius, and theta being 0 to 2 pi. x squared plus y squared becomes r squared, and remember the trick that the element dx dy becomes r dr d theta. So the rectangular integral of e to the minus x squared plus y squared over the whole plane becomes the polar integral, where we integrate the radius from 0 to infinity, theta from 0 to 2 pi, and we end up with this simplified integrand. All right, so now let's think through how we attack this integral. First of all, notice that we can flip the two integral signs, no problem. Now notice that the integrand does not depend on theta, it's constant with respect to theta, so we can just pull out the 2 pi. So now we only have an integral with respect to r. To do that integral, we're going to want to do a u sub. When we do the u sub, we now get an integral of a simple exponential, do a little bit of a simplification, do the integral, plug things in, and we end up with the answer of pi. Okay, so we know how to do that integral, but how do we do the integral we really want to know how to do? Okay, so now there's this nice little lemma. It's a cute little integration trick. If we take a function f and we integrate f of x times f of y over the square dx and dy, that's the same thing as integrating the function squared. Okay, and to see how this works, notice that if we look at the proof, if we square an integral, well, that's just writing the integral twice. Notice the first integral is f of x dx. The second integral is also f of x dx. But of course, x here is a dummy variable. We can switch x to y. When we switch x to y, we now have two integrals, one over dx, one over dy, and then we can just recombine them. The dx's and dy's pass through each other. Okay, so now we use the lemma, but in reverse. If the double integral is equal to the single integral squared, the single integral is the square root of the double integral. We've already done the double integral, that ends is equal to pi, so the single integral is equal to the square root of pi. And we're done.